Battle of skills, of course, on the stage. But a battle of stamina as well. The temperatures have soared. Let's see the darts fly in this final. Well, of course, you want to be involved at this time on a Sunday. But arguably, this is probably the most comfortable these guys will be. The temperature has plummeted outside. The fresh air has rejuvenated everybody in here. And now there are no excuses for anybody. I think it's fair to say that the semi-finals did not live up to the standard that had been set before. But perhaps having got over that line and into the first European Tour final, the pair can play with a little bit of freedom. And the story has been the race to the world match play, but Jamie Hughes could win a big, big title here and take the winner's share of the £140,000 prize fund, which is 25 grand. Well, they are playing this game for 15 grand, but it's worth so much more. 102 can still be done if he finds a 57 and then a double top. 82. Bunting looking for three green bits. He's got two. Probably going to be in vain, but you never know. Is that too close? It might be. Oh, it was too close. And the Bunting fans are vocal. Tops for an early break. Well, Stephen has got a bucket full of titles throughout his career. It's almost weird that he's only got two PDC ranking titles. 81. He has, of course, been to the final of another one where he, he made the final in Sydney yeah, in the World Series. He's only the final on stage in the PDC. Lost out to Phil Taylor that night. I think this is going to be a little bit attritional. There are going to be mistakes in this. There are going to be nerves. And I think Steven is the only player on that stage who has played in a first to eight game. It was this year against Jeffrey Desvaughn. Yeah, most recent final for him in the PDC. Hughes has been in a, a PDC final of sorts, won a challenge tour event last year. Well, but there's going to be two schools of thought on whether that counts. It's going to be guys out there who say, well, of course it counts. I'm of the other school saying, at this point in his career, it doesn't count. And I don't think he is ever going to go back to the challenge tour, Jamie Hughes. He has definitely put the building blocks in place to make sure that he is going to be here for a long time to come. It was a big shock that he ended up on the challenge tour in the first place. But he put that right and has produced some big stuff on the Pro Tour. I did play a, a few Pro Tour tournaments last year. Sometimes you've got to go backwards to go forwards, right? Well, it's exactly what Stephen Bunting's had to do. This is a man who's won the World Championship at Lakeside. Won everything in the BDO. Came across with something of a fanfare. Won a title straight away. Had the heights of the World Series, which we mentioned, the Premier League. Stephen Bunting and he's had to take a few steps back and he's had to put the work in on and off the board. That is a big miss. That isn't. Doesn't matter, Stephen, as long as you get there. Might have been a bit scrappy. But the tops was great. Well, there have been times when Stephen Bunting has thought about putting his darts in the case and never taking them out again. He got that bad for Stephen Bunting. A man who is used to winning so much all of a sudden could not win and he did not know what to do and full credit to his character and he sought help, he's been seeing a sports psychologist, he's been 
putting in the hours on the OK. He said in an interview earlier today he's been lazy up until the last year or so. And he's certainly reaping the rewards. As you said, it is five years since David Bunting stood on the stage and played in a final. That's Sydney Darts Masters 2014. 99. Just to give you a, an idea of what kind of thing was going on then. Paul Nicholson was in the tournament. Remember it? I'm trying to think of a player. He played Phil Taylor in the first round. Oh, oh shock <laughs> horror. <laughs> yeah. How's your look? Michael Van Gogh was beaten in the first round too. Remember who by? You love putting me in the spot, don't you? Uh, Warren Parry. It was Warren Parry. Beat oh. MVG 6-5. Check mark for me. Then lost to James Wade, who then lost to Stephen Bunting, who then lost to Mr. Taylor. One round and 39. Stephen, you require 107. Big fish coming in. Possible. Not anymore. That was very close. Pressure applied, and Yosa needs to get on the board. He's in the same position he was in against Whitlock in the semi. Needs this. That is a very big dart. And just like the semi, he is kept in touch. Well, the boy from the black country bounced back in the final just as he did in the semi against Simon Whitlock. From this position, went on a run of five consecutive legs before the wizard brilliant double double finish. Got him in the match, but then five missed darts in one leg. Gave Hughes a gift that he accepted very, very gratefully. You know what, Murphy? Don't forget the first time you meet certain people. First time I ever met Stephen, it was at the back end of two, uh, 1999. He was 16 years old and he was in the A squad for Merseyside. Played a Northumberland fella called Jimmy White. And I was asking all my friends, who's this then? Oh, he's, he's really good. He's the best youth player in the world. Oh, and he was. He was better than everybody. And he destroyed Jimmy White that day at the Northern Club in Ashington. And the next time I met him was at a social club in Toxteth. And he was playing his pals upstairs while the county game was going on. And he was... He was beating them by throwing his darts backwards. 96. He's a bit of a wizard, is our Stephen. But first time I met Jamie Hughes was at Lakeside when he gave that famous interview where he wanted to wish a b <laughs> happy birthday to all of his pals. Well, a few of his pals will be happy tonight. If Hughes can trouser the 25,000 pounds, the first PDC title and bag a spot of the match play, but plenty of darts to be thrown. Between now and then, Bunting has been perfect on doubles at the start of this match. Can he carry on that run? Oh, what a shot! Frame that one, Stephen. That was absolutely Picasso-esque. Wow! The bullet on the ball. Incredible dart from Stephen Bunting to take a 3-1 lead. Hughes hits back. We might just get that final we wanted, you know. Well, we've had a couple of pearls tonight, haven't we? The Keegan Brown 1-2-5 was pretty good. Yeah, well crafted. Bunting somehow squeezed that dart into the bullseye. And if Hughes can squeeze another one in here, then we might, we just might, Get another nine data. The important thing about this leg is that he wins it. He stays in touch with Stephen and doesn't allow him to get really big room in this match. You can see how bothered he is by that. Doesn't give a lot of weight as our Yozza. Well, Stephen Bunting has twice been on 1-4-1 one one after six starts have been thrown in this tournament and he said that it's affected him a little bit. So as you mentioned, Hughes just focused on winning the leg. Nice show of respect between the pair there. Good to see from Stephen. These are two players that you won't get any argy-bargy on the stage with, I can assure you of that. Can Hughes make sure of this? He can. 
11 dart out to reduce the arrears to a single leg. I wonder what you would get if you went to an Indian restaurant and ordered an argy bargy. I wonder how that would taste. 48. Probably a bit, bit bloody. Yeah, Stephen has a valuable break of throw though, still, and he also wow. has got to find, for me, a 12 daughter probably in the next four legs. I'll tell you what surprised me at the start of the match is how well Stephen Bunting has finished in comparison to Hughes only hit, hitting a quarter of his doubles so far because going into this match, Bunting had had 28 more attempts at double than his opponent. Hughes averaging a wow. checkout percentage of just under 50% before the final. I find that quite incredible when you consider how strong Jamie Hughes is on score. Well, his finishing has been superb in this tournament as well, hasn't it? And you were saying that the magic mark was around 40%. Well, you can see for the event that Hughes is above that, but Bunting slightly below it. Wow. But in the final, a contrast to what's gone before. Got to do the right things at the right times, eh? That throw of Bunting is just breaking down a little bit. He's got to maintain rhythm and fluidity with that right arm. It's getting a bit erratic because it's looking very likely that Jamie Hughes is going to equalise in a second. Well, that won't help. Well, if that's going to happen, that's a good time for it to happen, in my opinion. When he's out of the leg and Yossa is about to go 3 3. The last thing you need is it to happen at a really crucial time when you're on a double. Yossa split the nines. So he's going to have to get crafty with a single and then double shot. Well, he might hope two don't go in here because had he had 60 points more, he would have been a 1 5 6. Jamie required nine. Good call. And got a, dart at a double. Hughes will. Get two more if he needs them. Needed only one, and he does equalise, but also breaks the bunting throw. Is it advantage Hughes now? That first start has been so good. And he actually said in an interview with John McDonald earlier today that if he gets the first start right, he can do whatever he wants. That's a scary thing to say to the field, to the world. Well, he's outscoring Stephen. The perfect doubling is kind of what's keeping the bullet in this match. More proof. Get the first start in, he can do what he wants. Oh, oh well 60 more on the floor. Yeah, you could see it came off the dart that was already in the bed. Bunting groups them ever so tightly, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Could have been his first max of the final. Hughes has already fired in three. So much power and accuracy at the minute from Jamie Hughes. He had a semi-final earlier this season on the Euro Tour, and he hit the wall and there's another 60 on the floor unbelievably Jamie require 83. Kevin Garcia in the crowd is dumbstruck no need for 16 and bull for Yoza double 18 for the lead Game for the first time Jamie Hughes leads Jamie Hughes. in this final and he is the first one A to get to the halfway the point I think Stephen is making a very wise choice to refresh his flights, just in case he's hitting any jagged parts at the top of them. Maybe he's using this as a tactic to just take a few breaths because Yoza, 40 darts for the last three legs. That's world class. Yeah, and the two on throw done in four visits, meaning Bunting would have had to fire in a perfect leg to stop him. That's why you take spare flights up there, folks. 
just in case you need to have one of those moments. Stephen Bunting does have a, a better Nine record seven. against Hughes than Hughes has against him. Leads 3-1 in previous meetings, but the only recent one came at the Players' Championship event, which Stephen went on to reach the final in, and he did come from 5-3 behind in that match to win it 6-5. In the leg that made it five apiece, he took out 300 in six starts. 95. Yeah, that's not easy to do. Very similar equation here. We've just been 85. one leg behind in a race to eight. Will not bother the bullet. He also has got to be careful from 309. He's taken the nine off. He can't leave a finish from here. And that is a very welcome dart for Stephen because it allows him to keep the throw. He's got to manufacture something here and he's used the 25 perfectly there. 80. Interesting that he decided to go for the ball on last dart. It was effective. The ball's been good to him in this match. 100. Where does he go for the 142? Might go 17s. Yeah, some good sums from Stephen in the previous visit, but he's found the treble 20. Surprised that he didn't stay there. The way he's been grouping, was he scared that it might not stay in? Well, he had to go back to the 60 there, and that first dart was wobbly. This one could be an absolute backbreaker. He's going to stay left and go for the left portion. Oh, James Wilson, he is really nervous now and he's got every right. Not since Jamie Lewis made the final of the Gibraltar tournament years ago where he denied Michael Smith by making the final. Have we seen anything like this? But Yoza Hughes has taken it further. Yeah, Willie O'Connor got to the final of the corresponding <laughs> European Tour event last season, but couldn't overturn Michael Van Gerwen and book his spot at the Winter Gardens. Not only did Jamie Hughes have to try and sneak in the back door of the Blackpool venue, but had to get his chain cutters out as well and hammer it down. Job not done yet, though, and as I just mentioned, Stephen had that three-leg surge in their last meeting. You know that he can go on runs. But the way that Jamie Hughes has played throughout the tournament, particularly in the semi-final, which was not littered with quality, the quality moments came at the right time, and that 120 checkout we've just seen exhibited that. I think the most important thing in this final right now is that the sign of tiredness is coming from bunting. I'm not seeing that from Jamie. Right now, I'm seeing quality. That forceful follow through is still there. He's wow. not wilting. Didn't wilt against Whitlock. And he can breathe a little easier here. If he cleans up this 68, Hughes will be three in front and two away. It's not a bad miss because it leaves something he loves. Oh, he hit the hole! Wow, like a hole in one. It was a pierce mark, which I think he left there. And he just hit the hole. That's how good he is. What's to say he's not gonna hit it again? Well, Stephen Bunting squeezed in that bullseye for the 95 finish to go 3-1 ahead. And it was all looking very, very rosy in Bunting's garden, but he hasn't been allowed a dart at a double since. Yeah, chasm between them in the averages. And 102 in a final is going to do a lot of damage. And there are people who have had much bigger averages than 102 and not won a final. Chris Dobie was in a final, average 110 against MVG. That wasn't enough. But against most people, it will get it done. Yes, it was the bullet that did for Dobie en route to this final, having seen off 
A pair of Scotsmen in Robert Thornton and Peter Wright before that 6-5 win. And to the tonight victories against Daryl Gurney and Keegan Brown. <laughs> Put him in this decider, but has he run out of steam? He looks like he's at the wall to me, and he's got to summon up some mental strength now, get some oxygen, <laughs> get some water, make some good choices, and get some rhythm. The assault has to start now. Coming up dry. Yeah, he is. And if Hughes can take advantage here and hit something big, then never mind a three-leg surge. Bunting's going to have to need something very, very special indeed. Five legs on the spin to turn this around. Well, that dart has flattened and totally obscured the 60. But he wanted to stay there to try and leave 150. He also needs to switch himself. Nine He's done it so well. This is a huge exchange coming up here. Stephen Bunting has done his bit, but has to hope that Hughes does not hit. He doesn't. Next best thing. Bunning hasn't so missed a dart at double, but he hasn't had a dart at double for a very long time in this match. Big time double eight. 36. And that approach Jamie play from Hughes 36. maybe put on enough pressure. In a flash, he gets himself within one. We've said all season long that Jamie Hughes was going to do something. He is doing something, and it's right now. He is one leg away from a huge title, which will change his entire career. What a danger he could be in Blackpool. Because now, he's a favorite to fill that final spot. I'm not sure he's even thinking about that. I think right now he is so engrossed in playing well. It's almost like when you're in a practice session with someone and you're just going on and on and there's no real end to it. Yeah, I think though if you're aware of what's happening, he will have thought about it before going on stage. However, as I'm sure you will be able to testify when you're on the stage all you're thinking about is the match that you're playing correct well he could win it in style Paul well you could see it it's doing a hanky doing an Aspinall doing a Lloydy we're not gonna add Jimmy Hughes to that list but there's a very exclusive list about to start the first name to go on the Czech Open title is looking very likely to be Jamie Hughes. And it could well be the time to punch your ticket to the world match play, Jamie. 57. Is he going for this? Probably teased us with the prospect. Well, it had to be tops, didn't it? Because I've said it so many times in the last three days. He has been dynamite on tops. And if he hits the hole in that double top again, it'll just prove how good this guy is. This for the title then, double top. It's a huge moment. It's Hughes' moment. The first winner of the first Jamie Czech Darts Hughes. Open is Jamie Hughes.